Sweet. What's up, everybody? This is uh, uh, another podcast episode, Thursday, 10 a.m. Uh, I'm here with uh, Mr. Eric D. Muller, and we're going to give right. you guys an update on what's going on this week in the industry, what's going on with Airbnb, what's going on with the crisis, and we have a lot of interesting stuff uh, because we, uh, we sent out a survey and a lot of people responded and provided us with their tips, what they're doing, how they're getting through the crisis. So we're going to share a lot of advice. Everything that came through the survey, we're going to share with you guys in this podcast. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a lot of stuff, really exciting. Uh, so Eric, what's up, man? Welcome to Get Paid for Your Pad, episode number 323. All right, all right, all right. What is up, man? Thank you for having me again. I'm excited about this one. We got we got a lot to talk about on this podcast. Yeah, 100%, man, 100%. And uh, for the people that are watching live right now in the Airbnb Profit Club, what's up, Anton? Drop us a comment. Uh, drop us a drop us a oh yeah. Let us know what's going on. Um, and uh, and we'll uh, we'll get going in a uh, in a second here. Feel free to drop questions. Uh, we can see your comments, so if you have a question, just drop it in there and we'll uh, answer it. I'm actually monitoring the questions as I, as I speak. So let's, uh, let's dive in, Eric. Uh, like you said, a lot of stuff going on. Let's, uh, let's give people an update on the most important news items of, uh, of this week. So I think the, the, major, the major one, obviously, was the, the live, right, with, uh, with Brian Chesky. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I think I think he there was there was three major points that he that he announced in in my opinion. Number one, the Airbnb extenuating circumstances policy is extended to 30, May thirty first. So any bookings that were made before March fourteenth, all um, with check in between March fourteenth and May thirty first, now are under the extenuating circumstances policy, which means that the guests can book. Uh, sorry, can refund, uh, can get a complete refund from Airbnb. Um, but also they announced that they are going to refund 25% of the cancellation fees that hosts would be eligible for um, to, the, to the host. So they, they have $250 million uh, worth of uh, refunds that they're going to pass out, pass on to the hosts who didn't get that cancellation uh, refund. Uh, because of the extenuating circumstances policy. So just to make sure there's no confusion around it, uh, you're not getting 25% of the booking amount. You're getting 25% of what you otherwise would have received according to your cancellation policy. And the last thing is they, uh, they established a $10 million relief fund for Airbnb hosts who are uh, going through hardship as, as, a, as a result of this, this crisis. So Eric, what are you, what are your thoughts, man? Yeah, yeah, and uh, to clarify that too, that ten million dollar relief fund is for specifically for super hosts. So, hmm. Good point. yeah, it's yeah, it's interesting. I mean, so to clarify that, it's um, ten million dollars for super hosts that have up to two properties uh, max: your primary home and a secondary home. Um, you have to have to be a super host for over a year. Um, and I believe if I read this correctly, and we have so many people in the community that is, is you know, applying for it now, um, it seems like you can get up to five thousand um, dollars, which is interesting. And it also applies towards uh, Airbnb experiences um, as well. Listen, I think, I think it's, um, I, I think it's it. I don't know. I have mixed, mixed, mixed feelings towards this, mixed emotions towards this, right? I think one, it's awesome to see a company like Airbnb step up and invest some money into their community, into their hosts. You know, they, uh, they took a really strong stance when it came to um, the, the guests canceling and, you know, the host community felt like they, you know, just kind of put all their focus and support on, on the guests. So it's awesome to see them actually putting something into play now to help hosts. And as a business owner, I mean, to look at that, I mean, you know, $250 million, um, you know, that's a big fund. And the $10 million, backstory on that, the uh, employees of Airbnb kickstarted that with a million dollars of their own money, apparently, out of their uh, salaries. And the owners of the founders of Airbnb put the additional nine 
million of their own money into it. So it's cool to see that stuff. And I think it's going to be able to help some people, but it's also, if you look at the size of the company and the, the amount of cash that they're sitting on at, uh, in the moment and the opportunities that they have created for hosts around the world, um, it's still a drop in the bucket for the amount of people and hosts that are being affected by this, uh, this crisis right now. Is it Airbnb's fault that the crisis is hitting hosts this hard? No. Do they have a responsibility to help as many hosts as possible? I, I believe so. Um, I think this is a good um, step in the right direction. I just don't know how big of a impact this is actually going to be. So yeah, I'm curious sure. to, uh, you know, curious to hear your thoughts on this, but yeah, some mixed emotions there. Yeah, man, for sure. Um, and by the way, if you can move away from your camera, uh, from your microphone a little bit, because I'm getting some p p p p So um, listen, so what, here's what I'm thinking, man. First of all, the, the relief fund, the $10 million relief fund, uh, you're right. It's five thousand uh, dollars maximum, or it is just it's five thousand dollars. I think there's just one amount. Um, also, you can't apply for it. Airbnb will reach out to you if they think that you're eligible for it. Um, and so, ten million divided by five thousand is two thousand, which means that two thousand hosts are going to receive two thousand uh, five thousand dollars, right? So, two thousand hosts. Now. I'm not sure what the up-to-date numbers are on the amount of hosts worldwide. I think we have up to like 6 million listings. Um, but the amount of hosts, I'm not exactly sure how many it, it are, they are, but I think it's definitely over a million. Um, somewhere between 1 and 2 million is my guess. So, you know, out of 1 to 2 million hosts, um, you know, 2,000 hosts to get this $5,000 is, uh, it's like you said, it's, it's, it's a drop in the bucket. But at the same time, mm. it's, you know, it's, it's still, it's better than nothing. Right. So, um, so yeah, just, uh, just to clarify on the, on the 250 million of people that the Airbnb is going to pay to, um, to hosts that had, uh, their, some of their bookings canceled. Anton is asking a question. Is this only if you have a strict cancellation policy and is it for all countries? Well, it's for all countries except for China. And it, it applies to not just to strict cancellation policy, it applies to all policies. Basically, the way it works is, you know, these are, this is for bookings before March 14th. So when you, got, when you have a booking that was canceled, if it, if it is under the extenuating circumstances policy, whatever your cancellation policy was at the time of the booking, that's the cancellation policy that applies. And so... The, the amount of money that you would have received from your guests under your policy, they take 25% of that and that's the amount of money that you're going to get, mm -hmm. right? So, the, so it doesn't matter like whether, whether you have flexible or moderate or, or strict, it, it obviously determines the amount of money that you're getting, um, but, it's, uh, but it applies for all policies, right? So obviously with strict, you're going to receive more than if you had moderate or even if you had flexible, I mean, the only way that you can get money when you when you have flexible, I think, is it's like if somebody cancels on the day off or you know two days in advance or something. Um, I have to I have to confirm that, but uh, but obviously on the flexible, you're probably not going to get anything. Um, but on the model rarity, you, you might be able to get something, and on the strict, you're most likely going to get something. So that's yeah. to that's to clarify. Thank you for asking the question. Um, Peter is saying uh, 10 million divided by 5K, it's nothing, 2,000 hosts. Yep, that's right. So it's only 2,000 hosts. It's a very small percentage of the community. But at the same time, it's, it's at least they're, they're doing something. And if you watch the live from Brian Chesky, um, you can tell that uh, they, they are very aware that a lot of hosts right now are having some negative sentiments towards Airbnb. Right? And I think this is going to have a yeah. negative impact on, on Airbnb for a long time. I think this has really damaged um, the, the rep Airbnb's reputation. Uh, I think they realize that. And so one of the things that uh, Brian did on the live was, you know, he kind of uh, mentioned that they, they realized they, they should have done a better good job, done a better job, and, and, and they should have done more to, to be there for hosts. Also, their, the way they communicate is is kind of, kind of a little bit uh, uh, challenging because, you know, for example, they announced this flexible 
more flexible cancellations policy where they were saying that they would, uh, um, they would not charge the host the 3% on flexible, if you use flexible cancellation policies. Now, I've, I have yet to see anybody who actually can confirm that that's actually happening. Um, so there's, you know, there, I, feel, I feel like they keep their communication a little bit vague as well at some points because they want to have some flexibility as to what they're actually going to do. Um, and so, you know, one question that we get from hosts right now is, you know, should you use flexible or, or strict going forward, right? Because on the one hand, Airbnb is really uh, promoting the flexible cancellation policy and they have uh, added a filter, a guest filter on their website. So if you book an Airbnb right now, you can actually filter for cancellation policy. Um, so you can select uh, yeah. flexible, of cancel flexible cancellation in the filter. And then the only listings that you're going to show are the ones that have fle a flexible cancellation policy. Now, they're also, they also said they're going to give you a listing of bump in the search results. Uh, again, that's something that I haven't been able to confirm whether they're actually doing that. Um, but, um, but yeah, what's, what, what, what's, the best, what's the best policy right now? Well, I think that a lot of guests are, um, they're hesitant to book strict cancellation policies right now because they know there's so much uncertainty. And so that I think is the, is the sort of the reason to use a flexible policy right now is because, you know, it'll increase the chance that you'll get a booking. But then at the same time, you know, there's a chance that Airbnb is going to extend this extenuating uh, circumstances policy, right? Who knows? Like right? right now, it's only for bookings that were made before March 14th. But I mean, they keep changing mm -hmm. things. So what if they what if they suddenly change it and they say, okay, it's for for any bookings this year. Um, and 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 so if you use the flexible cancellation policy now and you get a bunch of bookings in in June and July and and and, and August. And and then they uh, and and then they change the the policies. Um, I'm sorry. If you use the strict cancellation policy, <clears throat> you think you're protected. But then, what if Airbnb actually changes the extenuating circumstances policy again and opens it up for um, you know for any bookings this year? Then you're not really protected. And then you just have to hope that they're going to give you that 25. percent uh, But they're going to run out of money as well. I think with this 250 million. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to go fast. Um, I think, you know, I think it's more of a Band-Aid than anything. It's putting a Band-Aid over bullet, bullet wound right now. And, you know, there's a lot of hosts, especially in our community, that are feeling that this is more of a PR stunt than it is actually a to support the host community. So, I don't know. I think time will tell. Time will tell if... Um, if this is actually a benefit for us or not. But uh, the feedback that we're getting at the moment is uh, the host community, even the, the super host community, no one's really excited about it, right? $10 million is going to go pretty quick. $250 million on a global level is going to go even faster. So yeah, not, not 100% sure. All right, man. Let's dive, let's dive into the, the exciting stuff is uh, you know, the solutions that came out of our survey. So we, we sent out a survey, a lot of people responded to it, answered a, a whole range of questions. Um, so thank you for, for everybody who responded to our survey. Uh, if you haven't uh, responded yet, you can still do so. There's a, should be, if you're on our email list, then uh, you should have an email about it. But let's, uh, let's go, well, first let's, let's, let's mention a couple, uh, uh, couple funny things that we noticed, and then we'll <laughs> dive into the solutions uh, that we tried. So first of yeah. all, um, and Anton's asking, what's, what's wrong with Brian's face? <laughs> so people who watch it live, they yeah. probably notice that he, uh, he's, he's not looking too good. Um, no. Obviously, he's in a lot of stress right now, as, as everybody can imagine. So I think uh, he's probably lost a fair amount of sleep over, over all of this. As, uh, and he's not, probably not the only ones. Um, so two funny things. First of all, uh, we've noticed that uh, recently a lot of people have been reaching out to us. Um, and, and a lot of people seem to think that we are Airbnb. <laughs> so we got yeah. an email saying like, what? This, uh, this, this $10 million is nothing. Like, what, what are you guys doing? You guys should be helping hosts and this and that. <laughs> we're like, first, we're a bit confused. And they're like, Do these, these people actually think we're Airbnb. So that, that, that's pretty funny. And then I'll let you share the other the other funny story that we have. Oh yeah. So, um, well, one thing I think everyone, uh, is aware of is that, uh, 
it's a very emotional time for a lot of human beings around the world. And, uh, you know, because we are putting out so much content into the world and, and talking to so many people, tens of thousands of people around the world, we're starting to receive a lot of that uh, emotional uh, feedback um, from some people, very irrational feedback as well. But one amazing stat that we learned recently is that uh, the virus, the coronavirus can survive in my beard for up to 72 hours. Uh, <laughs> and I thought, I know Anton uh, from Autohost will uh, appreciate this because he's always commenting on my beard. Um, but I thought that was hilarious that some of the feedback that we're getting from people is that, uh, I need to shave my beard because I am now a carrier of the coronavirus. So, uh, <laughs> I thought that was a funny, funny, uh, you know, some funny feedback on all the stuff that we're doing, but I can promise you, I wash my beard daily and, uh, it's not definitely not shaving it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. Well, that's good to know, man. I'm happy to hear that. All right, so let me let me go through all the solutions that people have uh, suggested, uh, the things that they are doing. So we asked we asked our hosts in our community, what are you doing to adapt to these new circumstances? What are you doing to try to get more bookings right now? Mm -hmm. um, so let me go through the list here, and then um, and then I'll let you I'll let you comment on the and, and give us a, a kind of like a higher higher level view on all of this because I know that's that's what you're really good at. So I'll go through the list. First of all, a lot of people are trying to defer their rent, mortgages, and expenses. Right, that makes a little sense. Uh, we're not getting as much income. And so any expenses that we have, we want to see if we can defer them, right? A lot of landlords are willing to cooperate on that right now. Um, also, uh, there's been Trump announced that uh, there's no foreclosures and uh, you can't be evicted, uh, especially here in California. I'm not sure if that's uh, countrywide. Um, but, um, but it's definitely a good idea to, to see what expenses you can defer. Talk to your lenders, talk to your landlords and see if you can de and defer the, the rents. Now, the second one, lowering rates. Obviously, that's a really obvious one. I don't really have to talk a lot about that. But uh, one interesting thing that I noticed is as well, some people are, they're not just lowering their rates, but they are offering some extras, right? Because there's, there's, you have extra time right now. And so there's things that you can do for your guests that don't cost you uh, very much money or no money at all, uh, but that will still improve the, the, the value to the guest. For example, you know, offering an airport pickup service. If you have a car, you can pick up your guests from the airport, right? That would really cost you a lot of money, but that's, uh, that's definitely uh, something very attractive. Um, so that was one suggestion that we got. Um, highlighting cleaning procedures in the titles, descriptions, and your photos as well. Um, that's also something that we see a lot of people do. Really important. Guests right now are very worried about the the cleaning the cleansiness of of properties right so that's something that you want to highlight you want to let people know mm -hmm. what are you doing to keep your space clean and as i'm going through this this is a long list so you know what eric i'm gonna i'm gonna do five and then you can do the next five because otherwise right, i'm gonna be right. running out of i'm gonna run run out of uh of voice power here so yeah um yeah. I think uh, the next thing, and, and I'll, I'll let you know when it's your turn, but uh, I think the next thing is uh, getting ready for the opportunity. I, we get that a lot from, from our hosts, and I think that's a really smart thing to do. Uh, yeah, if you have extra time right now and your property is not booked, uh, go in there and see what can be fixed, see what can be improved. Normally, we're too busy to, to do all these things. Um, so, you know, really doing that, doing the maintenance that, that you haven't done uh, you know, creating systems for your, for your business, just doing all those things that you normally don't have time for to make your business more efficient, make your hosting more efficient, uh, upgrading mm -hmm. the listings. Maybe it's like a guidebook, online guidebook uh, that you haven't had time to create yet. Um, you know, whatever, whatever you haven't had time to create yet, maybe it's email templates, right? Maybe you create a system for what kind of messaging you send out. Right, this is a good time to do all that kind of stuff because you you have more time right now. Plus, um, plus the you know your listings, your units might be empty, and there's going to be a surge in travel, of course, once once we get through this crisis. So you want to be ready for that. So a lot of people have uh, have mentioned that 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 that's something that they're focusing on. Um, and then uh, number five, allowing long-term stays and uh, long-term stay discounts. 
So one of the things that uh, Brian Chesky mentioned is that 50% of bookings right now are actually longer term bookings in Airbnb. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, first of all, allowing those days, but also communicating through your listing that your place is a, is a, is a good place to do a long term stay. Right. And, yep. and obviously adding the weekly and the monthly discounts. Yep. All right, Eric, the microphone is yours. Yeah, I mean, to go into that a little bit further with the um, with the long term stays, I think that's really, really important for. I think everyone is considering this, right? Um, but some of the negative feedback or the concerns that we get from a lot of hosts is that you know, yes, here in the states, there's a freeze on um, uh, evictions, uh, so there's a lot of people that are afraid of like, oh, what do we? How do we protect ourselves? How do we not rent to somebody who's going to squat right in the property? We're going from a short-term rental business model to now a medium-term or long-term uh, business model. So just to touch on that a bit, um, I think you know long-term stays. We should really start considering that, especially if you're looking into the the medical industry um, to kind of support towards that travel nurses and you know specialists in that in that um, that field. They typically look for properties anywhere between three and 14 weeks um, in their uh, in, in these homes. So when we say long-term stays, I think that's a, that's a mix of all different types of, uh, of stays. If you're renting to somebody for 30 days or more, I would definitely take in consideration uh, speaking to a local attorney to draw up the right paperwork uh, to, to protect yourself, right? Um, and making sure that you can rent these out for 30 days or more. Um, but right now I think what, what's going to be really important is if you do book something on Airbnb, you know, the challenge there is that there's no lease agreements or anything. So you do want to kind of, um, again, speak to an attorney to try to figure that out, uh, to protect yourself, but it's a big need. And we're seeing a lot of operators switching to that model, especially here in San Diego. A lot of operators are switching from the 14 day stays to 30 day stays to 90 day stays. Um, so I think that's going to be a big hit and a big um, revenue driver for a lot of people over the next few months. So some additional ways um, from the, from the survey that we're getting, that we're watching um, a lot of different hosts kind of uh, implement right now is uh, obviously flexible cancellation policy, right? So the idea here is to make it as, as easy as possible for the host to book your properties and feel as comfortable as possible to stay at these homes. Um, I think a lot of people, they just have no clue when they can travel again um, and they want to be able to kind of pop out of there or, or readjust when they can. So I think flexible cancellation policies really help setting up uh, direct booking websites. So in our, our inner circle, this is something that we we're spending a lot of time on actually the entire month of April we're bringing different experts in to talk specifically about direct booking. And the reason for that is we believe um, that this is the future of short-term rentals or medium-term rentals is direct bookings. So actually going down the process to understand how to build a website, how to drive local traffic to that website and start booking off of these channels. Um, I think that's major. And that goes into the next bullet point, which is uh, social media, driving Tri driving direct bookings from social media. So literally setting up, we're watching a lot of people, a lot of hosts do this on a global basis, setting up Facebook pages specifically for their listings or their properties um, or um, their companies. Uh, two is Pinterest. Uh, so on the podcast, uh, what was that? Two weeks ago, uh, last week? Last Monday. Last Monday, I uh, did a podcast, um, you know, dialing in how to drive traffic on Pinterest um, and then really driving a lot of bookings through different Facebook groups. Uh, this is something we're seeing here quite a bit as well is that there's a lot of stranded travelers, a lot of medical experts, um, and then a lot of locals that are finding properties in Facebook groups and posting it in those Facebook groups. So I think it's I think it's really smart right now. I, every this is on everyone's mind. Um, if you have or if you're hosting properties, is to start attracting your own clientele. And we're going to go into this for the inner circle members this month. We're going to go deep into how to do this, how to how to attract these guests, how to retarget these guests, all of that. Because I think this is a perfect example of what we're going through. Why 
we can't rely just on one booking channel anymore. We, we, during the abundant times, Airbnb was incredible driving us everything we needed, but this is a perfect example of why we should just consider Airbnb as another OTA, just like we do with HomeAway and Booking.com and everybody else. It's, these are our partners, but we can't rely just on one, one company to bring us those bookings anymore. Um, we're watching a lot of new platforms really drive a lot of bookings. Uh, and these platforms obviously have been around forever, but Craigslist is huge right now. The reason for that, again, is um, those are more, st more local stays. More local people are, f are booking through Craigslist. The ch obviously... Obviously, there's a lot. Some people are probably pulling their hair out right now listening to this. Oh my God, I'm not going to book my property or take a guest on from Craigslist, blah, 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 right? We're just, this, the whole point of mentioning this is just to kind of plant some creative seeds on how to, how to get these bookings in. Um, <clears throat> next week, we're actually on the podcast. We're talking to Anton from uh, Autohost. Uh, and not only on the podcast, but he's going to do an in-depth training in the inner circle on how to essentially limit, uh, minimize um, risk within your property. So minimize um, chargebacks and, and fraud, uh, fraud booking. So for the ones that are pulling their hair out once they heard Facebook and Craigslist, uh, just know we got some training coming up around that. Um, obviously, right now, travel nurses is huge. Um, Furnish Finders, uh, I think it's furnishfinders.com. Uh, they're a big website. They, they drive a lot of traffic for medical professionals. The feedback that we're getting right now is everybody's on there, but it's kind of crickets as far as booking your properties uh, on their website. So I don't have any per personal experiences with that yet. Um, but from the feedback we're getting from our communities is that there's just the demand is not there on that website, but it is a good website to, uh, you know, just get your property up there and, and get it back out, you know? And then lastly is uh, local hospitals. This is t harder, you know, this is easier said than done. Building relationships with local hospitals to drive traffic to your properties. I think if you're a bigger operator with multiple listings, this is something that you will have some success with. Uh, I think if you're an individual with one or two listings, um, you're, you'll have more success marketing these properties on the channels that we, we just mentioned. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for commenting on those. Um, as I'm looking at the list, I'm already realizing that we're not going to have time to cover everything. Um, but we are going, we're going to do a, uh, a Q and a based on, based on our survey actually, because you know, this is only one of the questions that we asked, like, what are you doing to get more bookings? But we asked a number of other questions and uh, we got a lot of really interesting information. So we're going to, we'll, we'll let you know when this is going to happen, but we're definitely going to do a Q and a on that. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is as you're talking about uh, alternative platforms, um, take a look at uh, Foodshake, foodshake.com. This is a, a, a new website, actually, that was started by Smart b, &B. Um, And so they created a, uh, a channel specifically for people that are looking for uh, a place to work from. Because that's, you know, that's a different, that's another category right now where there's a lot of uh, demand, yeah. right? I mean, what we're seeing is that uh, demand has just, obviously demand has gone down. Uh, but it also has shifted a lot, right? It's no longer travelers. It's people that are looking for a place to stay, not because they think it's fun to travel right now or they think that, you know, they, they want to go on a holiday because um, we're getting a, a lot of comments as well from people saying like, oh, oh, oh everyone should shut down their home, right? Hmm. But they kind of ignore the fact that there are a lot of people that need a place to stay right now, uh, whether yeah. it's travel nurses, medical professionals, it's people that are stranded, um, but also people that, you know, they need to work. And at home, you, it might not, might not be a good environment to work from for whatever reason, right? And so Smart B&B has, uh, has created a, a, a website for that. And they've done an incredible job because they were able to literally pull this off the, off the ground in, in like a, a couple of weeks' time. And um, it looks like they already have 10, 000, over 10,000 spaces in 10 different cities. Uh, and mm. so you know, they're spending a lot of uh, effort on marketing this uh, to get people to, uh, to book these units. So if you're interested, go ahead and uh, check out foodshake.com. 
You can list your space there. Um, I, I, I mean, I don't know how much demand is on the platform. Um, it's, and this is, you know, this, it's like the case with a lot of these things. Like right now, obviously, there, there is no perfect solution, right? It's like we have to, we have to just try and, and think outside of the box and do whatever we can to find a good use for our property in a responsible and a safe way. Um, but there's, you know, there's, there's, uh, it's, it's, it's still challenging, right? So, um, but check it out. This is uh, specifically for workspaces. And that's foot, F O O T shake.com. That's right. Okay. That's right. Footshake.com. Yeah. I haven't heard of that one yet, but I mean, that's, you know, that's, it's genius that they dove into that. That's something that Brian mentioned as well is that they're, they're, uh, Brian Chesky mentioned that is um, Airbnb is receiving a lot of demand um, for co-working spaces, essentially. So I think, um, yeah, I think I think. Listen, right now where where we're at as hosts, and everybody knows this, um, but just as a friendly reminder, we have to diversify as much as possible and build our systems to be able to manage this the be- the best way possible, right? To be able to manage all these different platforms and calendars and technology and everything else. So uh, being able to go up on all of these websites and offering them um, and trying to take what you can get right now is going to be, in my opinion, the best way that the individual host is going to be able to stay alive during this crisis. Absolutely. So I want to mention one more, uh, one more tip that we got through, through our survey. And this is something that I heard a lot of hosts uh, talk about actually. So one way to to see if you can fill up your space is reach out to your past guests, right? And there's a few ways that you can do this. Uh, number one, um, your guests, your past guests in your Airbnb reservations tab, uh, you'll be able to find their phone numbers. So you could send them a message. Um, you might have their email if you collect those. Um, but um, but that's a that's another strategy that we actually see hosts having some success with. Is just letting people know that you have a, a, a space available in case they need it um, mm. and that you're offering a very competitive price right now, right? And things that people kind of highlight is, again, the, the cleaning procedures. One thing that uh, a lot of people advertise now is that they, they keep their home uh, empty for 48 to 72 hours to make sure that, uh, you know, if there, if there is a virus in there, it dies because it can't live mm. longer than 72 hours. Um, so that's something that you can mention and also mention, mention the things that people are looking for right now. People want to be in a quiet space where they can work. They want to be in a safe space that's clean. Um, and so, you know, if you mention that you have the space available at a, at a really competitive price and you reach out to your past guests, then you might have a, a few that actually take you up on your offer. Mm. Um, and then, uh, let's see. Yeah, there's too many items on this list. <laughs> like we, uh, we got so much response from the survey. And again, uh, thank you so much for everybody who took the time to fill this out. Uh, cause this is, uh, this is really, really useful, I think for, for us, but for, for everybody in our community. Um, mm-hmm. last but not least, uh, one thing that I thought was really cool was, uh, somebody mentioned they, they're, mar- they're marketing their space as a romantic getaway. Right. So hmm. uh, I thought that was fun. Um, all right, so let's see. We we have a, a few announcements. A lot. We're doing a lot of stuff this week uh, and next week. Um, we're doing a lot of stuff all the time. So let's uh, let's just announce some of the stuff that people can expect from us on the podcast, but also on the uh, you know through the other channels that we that we have. So Eric, yep. you wanna you wanna kick that off? Yeah, for sure. So this Friday. So um, what is that? Uh, April. 3rd. Third, um, so tomorrow at eleven thirty a.m. inside the Airbnb Profit Club, I'm going to do a very short um, interview with uh, David Kraus. David Kraus is the um, uh, founder and CEO of RentResponsibly.org. Uh, he's also the uh, the co-founder of um, Noiseware. Uh, which is pretty cool. So he's been in the space for quite some time, but we're going to go live tomorrow inside the Airbnb Profit Club. Um, He has an incredible, incredible initiative right now to celebrate short-term rentals and the people in short-term rentals that are kind of giving back and and supporting supporting this through the crisis. 
Um, so we're going to go live, uh, tomorrow at the, uh, inside the Airbnb profit club. We're going to talk about that. Um, uh, Monday, um, I actually take over the podcast. You want to talk about that a bit? Yeah. So, and, and this is a question that I actually, I got from a few people is, uh, wh- where I'm going to, where I'm going to be, I'm going to travel, uh, on Monday, I'm going to fly back to Barcelona. So, uh, that's, uh, something that I'm uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit anxious about because I, I have no idea how this is going to happen. Obviously, I, I'd rather just stay here, but I have to leave the country bef- before uh, before ne- at the end of next week, uh, just because yeah. of uh, you know. So I uh, so I'm going to fly back to Barcelona. So I'm going to be in an airplane. Uh, you know, if if it doesn't get canceled, <laughs> uh, but I'm going to be in an airplane on uh, on Monday. So Eric is going yeah. to take over my role as the podcast host. That's right. That's right. It's going to be the uh, greatest podcast ever. Um, we, <laughs> sit, <laughs> we sit down with um, uh, Anton from Autohost. He, uh, we're going to go deep um, into how to, w- what's happening to this industry. If you don't know Anton, he runs, uh, he has a company of over 150 units in Toronto and he's going to share with us what he's going through as a big operator in that city and how COVID has impacted him. Uh, and then on top of that, he's going to share uh, his expert secrets on how to minimize risk, um, how to minimize chargebacks, all of that during this crisis right now. So we're going to do that Monday on the podcast. Um, we're going to stream that inside the Profit Club as well. So jump on and be able to ask us some questions. Uh, also, Tuesday for the Inner Circle members, Anton's going to be uh, carving out an hour to come into the Inner Circle and do a full-on training. So we're going to uh, we wanted to get out to the entire industry and community uh, through the podcast, but Anton's going to go into some detail uh, and give us some training for about an hour inside the inner circle. So um, so that's going to be awesome. That's going to be Tuesday at 11. Uh, and if you guys want some more info on the, uh, the inner circle and how to get involved, um, I guess we'll post a link about that and how you can do that. Um, but yeah, we have quite a bit coming up over the next uh, next few days. Sweet man, that's uh, that's exciting. I'm excited uh, as well about this. And uh, by the way, if you haven't uh, checked out our coronavirus survival kit yet, go to str survival.com. I have to make sure I said it right. str survivalkit.com. We created a uh, an awesome kit. It's seven bucks. It's a uh, it's a whole big resource uh, that has all the advice that we've gathered from the community on uh, on how do you go through this crisis, what are the adjustments that you make, and uh, all the advice to to reach the people that are looking for accommodation right now, plus all sorts of resources uh, like uh, cleaning checklists and uh, suggested headlines and titles for your listings, as well as Facebook groups where you can find stranded travelers and st- and such. So if you don't if you don't have your kit yet, uh, check it out strsurvivalkit uh, dot com. And then with that, uh, I think we've reached the end of the podcast. It's been uh, about forty minutes or so. Eric, any final words? Final words of wisdom you want to share with the audience? No, that's it. That's it. Um, you know, we, we're excited to continue to pump out content like this. And, uh, you know, please, everyone who's in our communities, post up as many comments as possible, share some resources, get involved in these lives. There's a reason why we're going live with all of this is we want to connect and get some feedback. So, you know, we can go back to the team and create more and more content around this and really figure out how many people we can support. So, we know these are challenging times, but uh, we'll get through it. We have a lot of, uh, we see the, the light at the end of the tunnel and um, we're excited to see a lot of people thrive through this situation. So yeah, appreciate everybody. And uh, until next week, we'll chat again. All right. Well, thank you, Eric, for joining me here on podcast episode number 323. Again, we're doing a, this weekly on Thursday at 10 a.m. PST live in the Airbnb Profit Club. So you can jump in there, you can watch us, you can ask questions. And this is also going to go on the YouTube channel as well. So you can watch it there or through the regular channels. So every Thursday we'll discuss uh, the news, we'll discuss what we learned from our community and share that with you guys. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you're watching and until Monday when Eric is going to do the interview with Anton and next week on Thursday, we'll be back with Uh, a news update episode. So thanks for listening until next time. See you guys.